myself, John Evans, Javier Lozano, Rob Sutherland, Josh Browning, and John Allen. And as I mentioned, we're here to talk about Jaguar Land Rover, which we will sometimes refer to as JLR. JLR is a division of the Indian automobile manufacturer Tata Motors. Tata Motors has a variety of products, from large trucks to mini cars. And in 2008, they purchased Jaguar Land Rover from Ford. Today, we have a very luxurious proposal for you for the growth opportunities of China. Our proposal is an investment in the JLR efforts in the luxury car market in China to expand these efforts. We have a plan to succeed in this market with the fuel of a $1.95 billion investment that we will turn into the five-year performance shown here. Sales volume multiplied by six, doubling our market share, and producing an EBITDA of $5.7 billion. This is our investment proposal and the performance output of our plan. So here's the roadmap that we're going to follow to provide you the details of that plan. First, let's talk about the growth in China. It's commonly known that the China economy is expanding. Let's see if we can get a better feeling for just how quickly it is growing. In 2006, they had the fourth largest GDP. Coming to 2008, they added the entire economic output of Australia and Mexico combined to jump to number three. Come forward to 2010, and during that four-year period, they added the entire economic output of Germany, which is the number four largest in the world, and they jumped to number two. We expect that by 2016, there will be the largest economy in the world. Some predict that may happen even sooner. So what are the implications of this growth on JLR? One is that this growth comes with a very burgeoning upper class. There is a large increase in the number of high-income households. Over the next 10 years, we're looking at a 38% per year rate of increase in high-income households. That means over the next five years alone, that's a, that's a five-fold factor increase in the number of high-income households. With this large increase in high-income households, comes a hunger and thirst for luxury goods. In 2009, China overtook the United States to become the second largest consumer of luxury goods in the world. By 2015, they will be the largest consumer of luxury goods, and they will be partaking in 29% of the world's market. So you really want us to believe that the Japanese buy more luxury goods than the Chinese in America? That's what the data shows. Do you believe it? Yes, I do. I've, I've lived in Japan for many years. The, the, the Japanese thirst for hunger is sensational. They, they love it. Oh, John, I love you. Hunger. Excuse me, excuse me. The, the thirst for luxury is very, very strong. Yeah, but, but in this, you're taking all luxury goods, right? All luxury goods. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about the luxury car market. in China and why we're focusing on this particular market. Let's talk about the competitive landscape. Out here? Thanks, John. Now, as we uh, go ahead and uh, increase our market share, try and increase our market share for Jaguar and Land Rover, you know, we're going to be going up against the likes of Mercedes, BMW, Audi, and Lexus. So as we take a look at the competitive <coughs> landscape, You can see that Audi leads the way, followed by BMW, Mercedes. Now, rounding off the top four is Lexus with 10% of the market. Where are we? You can see we're currently at 4%. So, are you representing Jaguar or Land Rover? Uh, both. Is this a plan for Jaguar or Land Rover? This is both. This is both. plan for both. That's correct. Yeah. 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 So, uh, is that 4% geographic specific or is it? China. It's China. This is China. Right, but the entire country. The entire country. Where do you have presence currently? I mean, when you say where, what do you mean? Cities? Cities in China? 
yeah. Shanghai, Beijing, all the big ones. All the, uh, yeah. So we looked at our what got us to our performance that got us to the four percent, and we actually identified some weaknesses. One is straightforward: we're late to China. Now we are having to make up ground on our competitors, and our strategy will actually address that. Now we also have some supply constraints. Now, what does that mean? I tell you, and that is that. <laughs> I don't want to make you uh, name any names here, but Ford is not able to keep up with the demand for engines that we have for them. So, so what are we doing to we address have that? Four engines in these sectors? Well, we just acquired them in 2008 from Ford. Yeah. We're transitioning. We're transitioning. Yeah, we still are Ford engines. We're going to wean ourselves off. And this is how we're going to do it. We're actually building two engine manufacturing facilities, one in India, the other in the UK. And we are expect these. Uh, Facilities to be fully operational by the end of 2012. So, the last is we do not have a local manufacturing presence. Once again, we're going to address this when we go through our strategy. So, let's take a look at some of our strengths. Right there, front and center, we have a globally established brand and that we have going for. Do you have anything that supports that plan? What's that? Do you have anything that supports that plan? That's good with us. Uh, the plan? That is a globally established brand. Seriously? <laughs> we're, we get, we're talking globally. We're talking globally. Look at all these awards we won. Oh, yeah. You don't win these awards by not being recognized globally. We win these awards by having a presence throughout the world. Nonetheless, these are awards we won. <laughs> So I think it was just focus. Ford didn't focus on it. Tata Motors, this is 70% of Tata Motors' earnings. They're putting all their focus in JLR and they're succeeding. Yeah, they I think it's all where you focus. Is the investment profitable? They're making money. I mean, they just bought it two years ago. So had they made $2.5 billion, absolutely not. But last year they did make a. How much? Last year I think it was, I want to say, one point, JLR made 1.7 billion. And they paid how much for it? 2.5. It's not bad. Are you absolutely convinced that number is accurate? Absolutely. Are you willing to bet your team's ranking on that number? 1.7 billion. Give or take 100 million, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to lose this contest that it's close to 1.7 billion. Can you continue? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now we also have a strong R&D department. Now we're going to be leading all these guys to actually uh, customize the vehicles so we can design them to appeal to the Chinese market. So what does that mean? Well, yeah. What does that mean specifically? Well, actually, uh, cars that are designed like that the Chinese people enjoy. Smaller, actually, smaller, smaller vehicles, people? more comfortable. Excuse me? There's smaller people? No, not smaller people, but some of them, because of the taxes, which you'll understand more as we go through our strategy, there's taxes that govern engine size that people may shy away from. Do you, you want to say? Wait, so you're going to doctor your luxury brand, right? To be able to cater to the market? So it's not a doctrine of the brain. It's, it's a change of the product. products. It's a change of the product. And, and, and our strategy will address exactly what type of change we're making and how those this? changes specifically. We're going to hear this great strategy. That's a good question. Let him talk. Why don't you get one right now? And here's our strategy. 
Well, I mean, we're not doing anything any different than anybody else. Okay. 